capacitive touch sensor. A capacitive touch sensor consists of two electrodes, transmitting and receiving one. Electrodes are placed on a dielectric board. The presence of the human finger in the vicinity of the electrodes affects the capacitance between the electrodes. Some studies reveal that the human tissue dielectric permittivity could be as much as 10,000. Compare this value to the dielectric permittivity of the air, which is 1. So I am going to apply plus 1 and minus 1 electric potential to the electrodes and measure the stored electric field energy. The capacitance value is then double value of the stored electric field energy divided by the potential difference squared. For simplicity, we will approximate the finger shape as a cylinder, but it is not necessary that the finger is placed on the axis of the symmetry of the sensor. So I am going to simulate a three-dimensional problem and place the finger in some arbitrary position. OK, let's start quick field now. In quick field, I create a new problem, sensor. Next. Problem type is electrostatics, length units are millimeters, and the model class is three-dimensional extrusion. Finish. The problem is created, and here is the sketch editor window. First, I'm going to insert a rectangle with the dimensions 40 by 40 millimeters. Insert. This rectangle represents the board. Close, zoom to fit, click to select, and assign levels. The board thickness is 1 millimeter, so I assign level 0 and 1 millimeter. Build the fine entanglement mesh and toggle two dimensional, three dimensional view. Here is the board. Return to the sketch. Next, I will insert a circle with a diameter of 4 millimeters. That would be a transmitting electrode. And I will insert another rectangle with the dimensions 10 by 10 millimeters and another one with the dimensions 14 by 14 millimeters. Close. That would be the receiving electrode. For simplicity, we consider that conducting foil thickness is zero. The board is covered with a thin layer of insulation, and the insulation layer thickness is 0 0.1 millimeter. So select everything and add new level 1.1. Now let's check how the model looks in 3D. Build the fine entanglement mesh and toggle the three dimensional view. Zoom in. This is the dielectric board and this is the insulation car. Now I need to add the finger and the air outside. Switch back to the 2D sketch. The finger is cylindrical, so I will switch to insert mode. Change the line type to half arc. Let's zoom in. So, for example, the finger will be placed here from 8 to minus 2 millimeters. That's the finger cross section. In fact, you can draw the finger in any place and assign the levels so that the finger is located above the sensor surface and the finger will be not touching the sensor. But in my case, the finger is touching the sensor, so the bottom level of the finger is 1.1 millimeters, and the top level will be 90 millimeters. Zoom to fit, build the fine mesh, and toggle to three-dimensional view. And here you are. A finger and the dielectric board. Nice. Now I'm going 
to add the a block. Zoom out. Switch to insert mode. Change the line type to be the half arc. And draw the a block boundary. Okay. Now I should add the levels to the A block. In fact, the A is not only here, but also above and below the sensor. So I should select editing and add new levels. Minus 100 and plus 200. Build the fine mesh and toggle the view. Now the model is constructed and I need to assign levels. Through levels you can distinguish objects and provide material properties. Click to select and the face is selected to select the body. You should click the selected face again. And you see the sketch is printed on each level. So this inner area is not selected. So I'm going to select the rubber band. If you draw the rubber band from right to the left, you will select all the objects that are crossed by the rubber band. So all these bodies are air. Hide. Aha, uh -huh. and these bodies are air. Hide. Let's zoom in. These bodies are finger. Right. Let's adjust the view. Select. This would be the directing board. Right, and this would be the coating. Okay, now let's provide physical properties for these labels. Double click the label name in the tree. Dielectric permittivity of the air is 1. Electrical permittivity of the coating is 4. Electrical permittivity of the dielectric is 4.7. Finger is a conducting body there is no electric field inside the conductor so for the finger i do not specify electric permittivity instead i'm going to assign boundary condition to the finger faces so hide all but this and select the finger faces i have selected the body the faces the edges and vertices the body already has label finger and now I'm going to assign label to the faces finger these are two different labels if I click here the body is selected and I if I click here the faces are selected and for the faces I specify floating conductor on the condition the finger is conducting but it is not connected to the voltage source, so its electric potential is so far unknown. Okay, far away from the sensor, the electric field fades to zero. So unhide all and assign boundary condition to the external faces. Select top faces and assign label external. And the same label I will assign to the bottom faces and to the side faces. To select multiple objects at the same time, hold the control button pressed. Now let's see external. All external boundaries are selected. And for the external label, I will specify zero electric potential. Next, let's assign labels to the transmitting and receiving electrodes. These electrodes are located on the dielectric board, so I'm going to hide all objects but the dielectric. 
zoom in, click to select, the face is selected, and hold the control button, press to select another face. This is a transmitting electrode, TX. And this will be a receiving electrode, RX. Transmitting electrode electric potential is plus one volt, and the receiving electrode electric potential is zero. Okay. GMT model and material data are ready. Before I can run the analysis, I should build the finite element mesh. The mesh is constructed in three steps. First, you build the mesh on edges. Then you build the mesh on faces. The mesh seems to be a bit too dense, so I'm going to adjust the mesh settings. Zoom to fit. And I will specify the mesh spacing manually. Instead of automatic, I will set manually and type in the value. One. And on this side, menu one. You can switch on the visualization of the spacing values. This sphere's radius is the same as the spacing value you have specified, one millimeter. And here in this vertex, you do not see the sphere because in this vertex, the spacing is automatic. Okay. Unhide all and specify spacing here. Let it be 10 millimeters. And at the bottom, 10 millimeters. Okay. Now let's build the mesh on faces and the mesh in volumes. The mesh is constructed, save all problem files and solve the problem. The problem is solved, let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the electric potential distribution on the external faces and it is zero as I have specified. Let's hide the air blocks. Now you can see the sensor and a finger. My task is to calculate the capacitance between the transmitting and receiving electrodes. And the capacitance is the ratio of the stored electric field energy, doubled value, to the potential difference squared. So I need to calculate the stored electric field energy. And the electric field energy is stored in all bodies, so I will unhide all. Edit, select all bodies, follow to the integrals, and here is the stored energy. I should double this value and divide by the potential difference squared. The potential difference is 1 volt, so this is the capacitance. It is 2.26 picofarads. Now, what will be the capacitance without finger? This I can easily calculate. For the finger, I specify electric permittivity of 1, the same as for the air. And for the finger faces, I do not specify any condition. You see the zero mark next to the finger faces? That means that this level doesn't affect the solution. Now let's solve the problem again. The problem has been solved. Let's take a look at the results. Again, I will use the integral tools and calculate the stored electric field energy. Here is the value. This is the old value of the capacitance when the finger was touching the sensor. Oh, 2.26 picofarads. Now let's calculate the new value of the capacitance without the finger. Copy the energy value and double this value. And divide by the potential difference square, which is 1. So this is 
the capacitance value without finger. Open air, and this is with finger. So you see the difference. If you search for the capacitive touch sensor on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the resulting pictures, and you can download the simulation files here. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any Quickfield edition, including Quickfield Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.